In this video, we're going to start modeling the carabiner top component. This is going to be part one of three to start modeling the carabiner top. And in order to do that, we're going to start off our file by creating a new component, giving the name of carabiner top. We'll say OK. With that component active, we're going to go ahead, choose Create Sketch, and on the top plane here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw a circle to a diameter of 0.515. Then I'm going to go ahead and finish the sketch. Clicking on the home button to size the sketch to the screen. Then I can go ahead and I'm going to choose offset plane. And from that top plane, we're going to offset this by 0.375. On this new work plane, we're going to create a sketch. So I can select the work plane. I'm going to create a rectangle center rectangle so from the center I can draw out as I'm drawing I can go ahead and type in the values this is 0.3 pressing the tab key on the keyboard I can go to 0.45 and then before we move forward I'm gonna click fill it and I'm gonna round the corners on our on our rectangle we just drew to 0.1 so as while that stays open, I'm going to go ahead and click and go around each corner to round those edges and right click and say OK. And then I can go ahead and say finish the sketch. So this will start us off with creating a loft and by selecting our circle and selecting that rectangular shape up there. One thing you may notice is that there might be on the back side, you may get a line right here that forms and it may be in a different spot. And if it is, um, doesn't mean that anything's wrong. It's just the tangent edges where they form. So here I've just got it set to merge. If I click keep, it goes through and shows you all the tangent edges that are there. Here they merge them together and we have one line that merges so with all those together. So if that's the case for you, just which should be for everybody if you're following this video and these steps, I'm just gonna say okay, and that will look good and allow us to get started for the next component. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Create Sketch. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and I wanna choose that YZ plane to look at and I'm gonna create an ellipse and we're gonna start focusing on the top part of the body. Now in order to start tracking to the origin I just go down and I just move my cursor to the origin not clicking. I'm just, now I'm going to click to start the center point of the ellipse. I'll set up what the major axis is and then as I move over to the side this will be the minor axis for the ellipse. Some dimensions to help us control that will be from the center to the origin 0.975 our major axis is going to have a dimension of 1.3. Our minor axis will have 0.75. And in order to lock the geometry in, it's actually this center point right here that keeps us from moving. So actually what I'm going to do is grab horizontal vertical, select the center point of the ellipse, and then choose the origin. And you'll see that'll fully constrain the sketch. I'm going to offset this ellipse going inward. So this is going to be a negative 0.15. I'm going to hit enter. There we'll see our offset. And then what we're going to see is we can finish our sketch. Now we're not going to necessarily do anything with the sketch right now. We are going to offset another plane from the top plane here to a value of 0.975, which should put us right in the middle of the ellipse. So as far as from the height that we had from the previous step. So now I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch on that work plane. Now I'm going to turn using the view cube up here in the upper right hand corner and I want to see this kind of like so to where I'm going to be able to see this minor axis right here. And what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to go to create and I'm going to go down to project slash include and select project and I want to select that, that minor axis for the ellipse. I'm going to say OK. Now if I click on the top of the view cube, 
it'll rotate downward and now I can see where the end of my of that particular minor axis is going to be and it's also going to allow me to, to get a snap point as I start to draw. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line. I'm going to go a little bit across here and I'm actually going to select the line and either you can go over to the sketch palette and select construction line or if you select the line and press the X key this will toggle back and forth between a construction line. But I'm going to go ahead and choose horizontal vertical. I'm going to hold down the shift key and as I go along the line, you're going to see there is a triangle with an X. And when I click on that and then select the origin, that is going to make sure that this line, and I may drag this off so that way you can see this a little better, and I'm going to run that one more time. Horizontal, vertical, hold the shift key, wait till I see that X with the, with the triangle symbol, which means that's the midpoint of that line. So I can click and then I can go ahead and choose the origin and you'll see now that I'll line those up so that way the midpoint of that line is always going to be there. The length of that line, if I press the D key on my keyboard, that's the shortcut to run dimension, I can make this line 0.3 and if it kind of moves outside I'm going to move it back behind the line here because here's the end point of our minor axis. So when I press dimension I want to make sure I grab the dot so you don't want to have the hot line highlighted you want to use the dot and then I'm going to click on this line and this distance is going to be 0.175 to set that line back a little bit further. Now what we're going to end up doing is, is having those dimensions and everything there so we're going to create our shape by going to arc and three point arc. From each end of the line I'm going to click to set the endpoints of the arc and then I'm going to select the end point of the axis so it should snap of the minor axis and that's going to create that particular shape there. Then all I have to do is from each end point, so I'll click on the left side for the end point of the line and I'm going to choose the other end point to be right here on the edge or right here where that point would be. And I'm going to kind of draw an arc in here. Do the same thing on the other side starting from here going to the other side and drawing an arc in so you'll see these two these two arcs will be blue i'm going to make them equal to each other by using an equal constraint and then i'll go ahead and dimension selecting one of the arcs and making it a 0.2 inch radius so that'll give us our shape there that we have that'll make it fully constrained so i'll finish the sketch and I'll click on the home button and one thing is is that as we you may have to be careful here as we go into the sweep command we want to make sure that we grab that anytime we go through and we do that we want to make sure we grab all pieces of our of our shape so sometimes projection so I want to go ahead and grab this profile as well that is all that I need for this particular profile if you watch or if you accidentally project more you may want to make sure that you grab all of these to be filled in. Then under the path I'm going to hit select and I'm going to choose the outside path. It's going to automatically assume that we want to cut this because we're cutting into this base component. But actually I want to change over here in the operation to join. And when I do that, that's going to go through and create the solid body. What I'll do from here is I'm going to go ahead and click the extrude button and I want to select this face right here and I want to choose under the extent type to go to object and then I actually have to click on the bottom edge of the part. Now what I've noticed in a lot of cases sometimes I, I get some some uh, questions about errors that can happen and right now the extent says to selected face. Probably the best case scenario to make sure that if this is not working for you or if it's filling in in the middle section is to choose two adjacent faces and you're going to notice it's not really going to do a whole lot make sure your operation is set to join and not new body just in case sometimes it will flip to that new body option but here it says two adjacent faces and then you either have two body or through body so this two body is already selected and that'll be defaulted and we can go ahead and say okay but a lot of times if you have errors i would choose actually to be honest to choose the two adjacent faces 
will be the one that you want to select. And I'll go ahead and say OK. So that'll create the main kind of component of our of our carabiner top. Now what we're going to end up doing is I'm going to offset a work plane off of the YZ plane by a distance 0.155. Then I can create a new sketch on that work plane and I'm going to set up and have to redraw a couple uh, of items here. One, I'm going to go to ellipse and I'm going to go ahead and draw the ellipse in somewhat close. I'm actually going to overshoot a little bit just so that way I don't accidentally get locked onto a point that I've previously drawn. So I'm going to go ahead and dimension from the origin to the center. We're going to use the exact same dimensions we had before. So 0.975. We're going to horizontally slash vertically constrain the center to the origin. We'll dimension the minor axis to be at a distance of 0.75. We'll do the height or the major axis to be at 1.3. So this one stays the same just because I can't really get the outside edge of this to project very well. I'm going to press the P key on the keyboard which gives us the shortcut to project. Then I'm going to grab the inside faces. I'm going to have to make two selections here. So select, that way I get the entire inside of the elliptical shape here. And I can go ahead and say OK. Now I'm going to start setting up what would be some of the measurements that I need to go through and create an opening for our swing gate on the pin for our, or the pin clip is what we'll name it for the carabiner top. So I'm going to go ahead and take a line and off the top edge I'm going to draw just a horizontal line straight across I guess to the left and I'm going to do the same thing down here on the bottom so you'll see I'll get us some snap points here to make that happen. I'm going to go ahead and select both of these. I'm going to hold control to select them both and I'm going to press the X key to make them construction lines. And what I can do is I'm going to take the line tool and I'm going to connect so from here on the outside I'm going to kind of draw at an angle and I want to connect it to the purple uh, projected ellipse that I have there and then here on the outside I want to be careful to make sure I don't get this constraint. It thinks it wants to run the two lines parallel so I'm going to purposely kind of make it somewhat flatter so that way it doesn't put that automatic constraint in. Measurements from the top so from this top line to the end point of this top line that's going to be the highest point. This is going to be a distance of 0.425 from that line again to the other end point, which will be the lowest point, that's going to be a distance of 0.55. For the bottom, the highest point, so in the back here, it's going to be another distance of 0.425. The other end point to the line, a distance of 0.4. So that's going to help kind of set up an opening that we should have. Now, some of you, when you go to uh, try to do this extrusion, may run into an issue. So here's what maybe we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and hit Finish Sketch. Majority of you could probably go through and do this operation right here. Click Extrude, select this portion, and we're going to cut through and do a Cut Distance All. And we're going to say OK. And this should be the, should be the finished step or the finished result that you should have. Now, if you do not have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete this extrusion. Here's the option that also can, can do. Sometimes it'll leave this middle section and then the rest of the ellipse portion gets deleted away. So I'm going to go ahead and with this sketch, I'm going to right click on it and say edit sketch. If that happens to you, here's what you can do. Grab the trim tool and trim away this portion right here. You'll see the portion that's highlighted in red. So from this point down to this point, we're going to trim away the outside edge of the ellipse. Now the only issue is is that our sketch is not going to be fully constrained anymore. So here's one way to fix that. I'm going to grab to the fixed geometric constraint or the lock. And I'm going to choose the top line and I'm going to choose the bottom line. And when I do that, that's going to lock those in place and you'll see those will be fully constrained once more. 
I'm going to finish the sketch. I will have to expand this to turn it back on to show the visibility. Now when I go to extrude, I can select that option and do the cut through, distance all, and then say OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and hide the sketch because we don't need it anymore. Collapse the menus in the browser. And now this will get us the majority of the carabiner top component. And also if you run into any issues, which are kind of, those are kind of common issues you can run into with the carabiner top. Once you get, once you get that done, then this gives you the majority of the main body that we will, in the next video, take a look at a lot of the details that go into creating the carabiner top, some of the indentations and the cutouts that allow for us to insert that pin clip swing gate. So check out the next video to see what we'll do in order to start adding some of those details to the opening that we just created.